Welcome to Unit 3 of the week on Business Process Management Fundamentals. In this unit, we will talk about process discovery. For your orientation, here's the overview of the course. And before we get started in today's topic, let's recap on what we've learned in Unit 2. In Unit 2, Process Identification, we have talked about the two scenarios of process identification of either designing the process architecture of an organization initially or determining the scope for a process improvement endeavor. We have also talked about the most important governance topics to be considered during the phase of process identification, which were the process architecture and the level concept, a meaningful BPM organizational setup, and the definition and training of the key roles. Also, we have talked about critical success factors of process identification, and we took a look at how processes are structured at SAP. Now it's time to kick off Unit 3, Process Discovery. After creating a process architecture, it's time to fill it with life. During process identification, processes have been determined on a high level, but what are the activities and process steps carried out within the operational processes? And who's responsible for carrying them out? And which systems are they supported by? Well, these are the questions we can find answers for in well-designed process models. Process models are flow diagrams that visually show the sequence of activities and the roles they are carried out by. Some of them might already exist, and some of them might need some update, and some of them we will have to create from scratch. If they need to be created, um, we need to discover what they might really look like by creating as-is process models of the current processes. There are three common approaches to discover processes to find out how things are really done. We can simply ask people who are really performing them by conducting interviews or workshops with them. Conducting interviews with individuals may be a little more time consuming, but it has the advantage of creating a higher level of trust between the interviewee and the interviewer, which leads to honest answers and displays different points of views. Conducting collaborative process workshops has the advantage that you can identify different perspectives at once and discuss them immediately. This approach is also great for redesigning processes. The third approach to discover a process is to gather process evidence about it. This evidence may consist of all kinds of existing documentation. Such insights could be drawn from IT systems or even just by shadowing an employee at work. As you can imagine, analyzing system dashboards or reports becomes more and more common as a growing share of processes are digitally supported. Let's talk a little bit more about these process models. And just to give you a rough orientation, I brought this slide with me from Unit 2. I used it to explain the con concept of process levels, if you remember. The level we now want to talk about is the bottom level, the BPM diagrams. What you can see here is a very simple, classic business process model. It describes who is doing what and in which system. Generally, one can say that modeling processes generates the following advantages. Most people understand a picture much better and quicker than written text. All information is visible at a glance to different stakeholders, and it creates transparency and improves process communication. Business and IT colleagues finally speak the same language and we can connect different processes across functions. And process models increase control and consistency. But to ensure that all parties speak the same common language, we need standards and guidelines to model processes. The most common modeling language is called BPMN 2.0. And let's take a look at that. What you can see on the left picture is the complete set of BPMN 2.0, the most common modeling language, and it's used for process modeling. 
At this point, I would like to clarify that process modeling is not to be confused with process management. A lot of people seem to think that once a process is modeled, they have done their job of managing a process. It's absolutely not the case. That's just saying because we have created an organizational chart, we are managing people. Process modeling is an important part of BPM, but a rather small one, really. It creates a basis by representing the process holistically in a precise and consistent manner. It provides a common language for all different stakeholders, such as business analysts, technical de de developers, and business people, so that they finally know what the other ones talk about. But the full set of BPM 2.0 consists of 64 elements, and I would rather not recommend using all of them. If you ask me, I would highly recommend to take some complexity and reducing, reducing the objects to the really necessary ones. They can be defined in the modeling conventions, for example, or just on a little cheat sheet like you can see here. Speaking of modeling conventions, once you start modeling processes, there are a bunch of topics and questions which will come up. The modeling conventions of an organization are the set of rules which should give answers to all these questions. This way, the overall quality and consistency of models can be improved even if many modelers are involved in designing business processes within BPM. Typically, these conventions are divided into the following five groups, architecture, layout, naming, notation, and process structure. And again, besides the full-blown handbook version, I recommend creating a modeling convention cheat sheet summarizing the most important rules to follow. The right picture is an example of SAP's modeling conventions, little cheat sheet for everyone to model a process. Now, one last modeling approach I would like to talk about is journey modeling. It's a way of visualizing the touch points with a certain group of process participants, most commonly customers or employees. It visually displays how this group experiences a specific process just from the other side. As customer experience is an important advantage in competitive markets, journey modeling is a great way to explain this perspective in an understandable way and to make it accessible to everyone within the organization. Because only when the creators of a product or a service fully understand the customer perspective Processes can be improved in a way that it optimizes the customer or employee experience. All right, it's time to check which products of the SAP Signavio suite will come in most handy during the phase of process discovery. The most obvious one, of course, is the process manager. It has been one of the best process modeling tools in the market for over a decade and helps you to model your processes at different statuses and compare them to one another. It allows you to work on processes with multiple stakeholders who can model and approve it. The journey modeler, as I've introduced to you, helps you to visualize the journey of a customer or employee along a certain process. The Collaboration Hub allows you to publish a process to de a desired group of people within an organization. This group can read and comment on each element of the process. At SAP, for example, we publish our processes to the entire internal and external workforce to create maximum transparency on our processes. Process Intelligence is SAP Signavio's mining solution, which can also help to discover processes. So let's summarize the important success factors of process discovery. To be best prepared, try to leverage existing documentation before conducting interviews or workshops. Make sure that data used is accurate and leverage existing data sources as data is outdated super quickly nowadays. Remind yourself to focus on the as-is. You will see that talking about as-is processes 
will automatically get you thinking about improvement potential and possible solutions. This is not the time. We only want to capture the current situation at this point. Ensure availability and accessibility of important stakeholders. Also, consider taking an outside-in view to combine the inside-out. Last but not least, try to verify a common understanding of the as-is process with the most important stakeholders. All right, time to go backstage at SAP and look at what SAP has defined for process discovery. At SAP, we have defined a BPM governance framework called the Golden Standard of Process Excellence. It summarizes the holistic 4D process modeling approach, a set of standards and guidelines, and the concept of process performance and continu continuous improvement. Now, as most of the other elements of the Golden Standard are somewhat self-explanatory, I would like to spend a little more time on the 4D modeling methodology. One day, Christian Klein mentioned at lunch that visualizing processes in general is helpful, but that instead of only seeing who is doing what, it would be of even greater value to have the supporting systems and the main data object visualized with a process model. So we created a new modeling approach, which displays processes in a holistic manner, taking into account the four most important dimensions of a process. Process steps, roles, IT systems, and data. Modeled in 4D, a process model now answers the questions of who is doing what, which systems and applications are supporting the process step, and what data is flowing in and out of the, of the activity. If you're interested in more details around the gold standard of SAP or the 4D process modeling approach, please feel, feel free to contact me in the course forum. Now let me wrap up the session three by summarizing our key takeaways real quick. At first we have talked about that in essence, process discovery is the gathering of process models in an organization. Then we covered the most common approaches to discover processes, performing interviews, workshops, and the collection of evidence. We then talked about process modeling and what the most important governance topics are in this phase. We talked briefly about the topic of journey modeling and which of the Signavio suite products can best support the activities in process discovery. Finally, we sneaked into the overview of SAP's golden standard and the 4D process modeling approach. I would like to thank you for your attention, and I'm looking forward to welcoming you to the next unit on process analysis.